I want you to perform 23,000 terrible squats every single day and see how you feel. In that scenario, you would probably expect that your muscles and your joints would probably start to ache and hurt and some sort of dysfunction would come from 23,000 terrible squats every single day. Now, why am I using this analogy? Well, the diaphragm, our main breathing muscle, contracts over 23,000 times per day. And you can start to see that if we don't do it effectively, other things start to pick up the slack. Now, the other things that I'm referencing are the neck muscles. Now, the neck muscles are supposed to be somewhat active during normal respiration. They're accessory muscles. They're kind of they're secondary. But what happens is so many of us are so compressed through the chest and this mid thoracic spine that normal respiration can't actually expand the rib cage. When we can't do this, these muscles that come down onto the first couple of ribs start to pick up the slack. They become primary muscles and they remove themselves from that secondary position. The goal of that is that they are going to help to elevate the rib cage so we can get some sort of expansion. So what we can start to do is we can start to learn how to expand the rib cage. When we do this, we get normal motion of the rib cage, normal expansion A to P, anterior to posterior, and we can start to truly relax these overactive neck muscles. Now, you already saw the title of this video, so I'm assuming you know how we're going to do it. But a balloon is a great tool to start to remove this neck pain. We need to get this thing that is working 23,000 times per day under control. And the balloon is our secret tool. So you may be asking yourself, how does a balloon help me decrease my neck pain? Well, anytime you say, think, or hear the word balloon, I just want you to change it with a synonymous term. That synonymous term is dumbbell. If I asked you to do dumbbell bicep curls with a 20 pound dumbbell on the right arm and body weight on the left arm, and you repeated that over the course of a couple months, which arm would you expect to get bigger or expect a change? I'm assuming you're saying the, the arm with a dumbbell. And that's because the dumbbell is resistance. This is resistance for our abs. Remember, the big problem we're trying to solve is how do we get the rib cage to move? We need to increase the pressure, the resistance, so the abdominals actually start to move the rib cage. Now, the balloon does some other stuff physiologically and biomechanically, AKA it decreases the diameter to create more resistance. But for the purpose of this video, I just want you to focus on a balloon is a dumbbell for your abs. We're going to use it as a tool to help create enough resistance and pressure to get the rib cage to move because we're going to recruit the abdominals. Our necks are going to one love rib cage movement. They're used to being jammed up tight but it's also going to love the facilitation of the abs. Why? Because the abs are helping the neck stay relaxed. So with that said, let's jump in how we actually would go through this balloon breathing and what we really need to see to make it effective. So you can do this in a bunch of different positions. However, I find that hook lying is the easiest to start to implement. Now I will make one quick disclaimer and that is that not everyone is going to benefit from a balloon. Some people have rib cages that move and they need more of a fogging type of glass. But in general, those that have a wide infrasternal angle, a greater than 90 infrasternal angle, those that have neck pain, those that feel compressed, have no shoulder mobility, these are the types of people that are really going to benefit from balloon breathing. Now, what we're gonna do is we'll go down in a hook lying position and the first thing that we really need to get out of this is that we need to stack the pelvis and the rib cage. Usually people that have too much compression anterior to posterior at the pump handle, which is the sternum, they have a 
pelvis that is forwards and a rib cage that is flared, and there's this disconnect between the two. We want to start to link them up. And so we can do that just by understanding and increasing our awareness of how to move the pelvis. So just think about moving the pelvis more posteriorly. If you don't know what that means, think of a big belt buckle. If you wanted to move the belt buckle towards your chin, you would do it this way. If you wanted to move it towards your feet, you would do this way. We want belt buckle towards the chin. Once we're in this position, we're gonna put one hand on the lower rib cage and one hand on the chest. When you start this, just keep it simple and just try to breathe through the balloon and get the rib cage to move. We want one movement and two sensation. We want you to be able to feel and sense the rib cage moving. So you would grab your balloon, you would put it in your mouth and then put your hands where they need to be. Inhale through your nose. And that's how we would start to blow up the balloon. Now, what are you focusing on here? Well, as we exhale, we should feel the hand on the lower rib cage start to depress towards the hip. That's indicative that the rib cage is moving down. Now, here's the trick. We need to keep adequate compression at this lower rib cage to actually get expansion at the chest. So, when you go down and exhale, you'll feel a certain amount of tension. You wanna keep that tension on the inhale. So we're inhaling through our nose, not losing the tension. If you do it right, the hand that is on top will expand up. This is representative that we're on the right track. Again, this is tricky, it takes some time, so take your time with it. But to really start to get this, we need to feel exhalation de depresses the ribs, inhalation expands the chest. Once you get comfortable with it, then you wanna to start to really pause in between breaths and really make sure you're feeling both the inhale and the exhale. But for the purpose of this video, the goal is you to just get the rib cage moving and for you to keep a little bit of abdominals on on the inhale. This is how we start to get the rib cage mobility we need so that the neck can start to relax. So if you're dealing with neck pain, I encourage you to try this out. Big takeaway here is that as you're doing this drill, you shouldn't feel neck pain. If you feel neck pain, you're probably exhaling too hard. Take your time, really try to let the breathing do the work. We increase our abdominal tension and intensity because of our exhale not because of us bearing down and tightening up, which usually tightens the neck. Now, if you're a personal trainer, physical therapist, PT student, and you wanna really teach your students this stuff at a much higher level, I encourage you to check out the Clinical Coaching Specialist Certification. I will leave that below so you can check it out. Also, if you're a patient and or someone that is dealing with chronic neck pain and you've tried a bunch of things but can't get out of pain, feel free to click the virtual assessment link below. I'd love to work with you and help you get out of pain.